Hey guys, it's Manvy Miles here, and I've got an exciting piece of new tech that's just floated across my desk. Um, in my day job as a, as a journalist who write about everything, kind of fitness, health, technology, running, gear, uh, where all this kind of stuff comes together, where we talk about things that can improve performance or can help with our health. That's, that's what I do in my day job, and every now and again I get something that floats across my desk that I think is really exciting. Um, and what I've got here is this little number. Now, this little baby looks like it's about a credit card sized, and it's called a a WeeWay, a WiiWay, a WiiWe. I, I don't actually know how to pronounce it. It's made out of Hungary. And what this little credit card thing actually does is put the power of an ECG test. That's an electrocardiogram, um, which you would normally have to go into a doctor's or somewhere, you know, like a basically a lab to get that kind of test done, and it comes at a cost. Um, it puts that power in your pocket, which I think is amazing. So let's take a look. Now we've seen some of this technology already arrive in some way or another. So, you know, the big news, I guess, last year was the Apple Watch Series 4. They came out and the Apple Watch became the first wearable device that was able to have uh, a, a sort of medical grade uh, ECG reading delivered from the wrist. Now, that was big news because what it means is that, you know, from... From people who may have never encountered any heart problems before right through to people who know they've got a condition the apple watch and the ecg was able to pick up some quite serious conditions some underlying conditions that otherwise you wouldn't spot now that includes atrial fibrillation um i'm not a medic so i'm not going to pretend you know pretend to know exactly all of these things but afib um increased the quality, the overall risk of um, stroke and heart failure and the Apple Watch Series 4 has already picked up a bunch of these. There's examples already hitting the news about people who've who've discovered this condition and and situations that are potentially life-threatening, actually. So it's, it's amazing to see technology that comes on that genuinely helps people from a health perspective. And I think this is really exciting also from a sort of fitness perspective. I'm going to talk about why. Um, so, you know, this, this little credit card, it weighs absolutely nothing. It's a bit fatter than a credit card device. It's got a couple of little sensors in the front. Um, it's got a power switch on the top here. This will pair with your smartphone. There's an app. It will pair via Bluetooth with your smartphone. And then simply by you putting your four fingers on the sensor, you can take an ECG, electrocardiogram reading. It takes one minute and you can do it from wherever you are that you've got your smartphone. I think that's incredible. Um, and this, this has been tested against 10,000 um, clinical samples and it's come out with a let me just check the numbers on that it's a 98.7 percent accuracy rating so this is a clinical grade ecg device that you can put in your pocket now this this is this is you know normally you'd have to have uh you know lots of different sensors attached to different parts of your of your body in order to get that kind of level of accuracy now the guys who made this are not claiming that this should this would replace those um full lab tests that you can get but just think about, you know, a step back where, you know, before they made this, you wouldn't be able to get that kind of information at all. So even 98.7% accuracy um, in the hands of more people is a really, really powerful thing. It means that people, you know, who may, uh, you may be picking up a lot more of the conditions. It will it'll flag up when you've got a condition or something that it spots that's abnormal and it will recommend quite rightly that you then go and see a medical professional a clinician, a GP, um, somebody who can look into this more deeply. But having something that can even give you that cue, even if it's not 100% correct, I think is a really, really powerful tool. And I love the fact that it's tiny and it's compact. And, you know, it's this is a, this is a sign of how throughout, you know, with, with medical technology, or I should say medical technology, but health technology, we, we're seeing quite a lot of leaps forward here where people are starting to be able to take control of their own health and their own health data and really be empowered to do some self-monitoring 
and do and, and provide information for their doctors that can be really valuable and can even save lives. So this one, it's not cheap, um, like most of this tech, it will set you back, let me just check the numbers on that, it's gonna set you back 229 euros, and at the current conversion rate, that's 200 pounds or 255 dollars. So is everyone gonna pick one of these up and have it sitting around in their house? I, I, I doubt it right now, unless you know that you've got a condition that would warrant that kind of regular testing. Um, but what I'm really fascinated, and this could become very, very useful from a fitness perspective. It's brilliant, actually, for, for, from a fitness perspective. And there's a lot of uses that once you've got one of these, if you think about heart rate variability, knowing whether or not you're ready to go back and train the next day. If you think about uh, looking at, you know, heart rate patterns before you sleep, if you look at heart rate patterns when you first wake up, if you look at recovery time, all of these things come into play when you've got this kind of equipment there at your fingertips. Anybody who has run the Marathon de Saab or done a French race will also know that one of the big tests that you have to pass in order to get into those races is to provide a signed medical ECG report from a doctor that shows that you're fit to run these races. It's a big step. There's a lot of stress that's involved in that. And actually, it can be quite expensive. And, you know, I know this is early days, but having one of these... If the MDS were to accept the reports, um, and according to the makers of this, these are these are fully you know, validated um, medical level reports that you get. If the MDS accepted that, imagine how easy that would become. One of these and a team of a few people that's going in the tent for 220 euros is going to save you guys a lot of money. And you know this kind of thing really excites me about how how and where this this technology will go in the future. So let's have a little bit of a closer look and see exactly what. A test looks like on one of these and some of the details that you can get. I'm pretty excited about it. I get excited about technology all the time, though. So I'd love to hear your comments in the feedback below. Do you think this is a, a waste of time? Would you pay 220 euros for one? Um, what other what other reasons could you think that um, you'd like to have one? What other heart rate information would you like a device like this to be able to supply you on a daily basis? Hit me up in the comments and let me know. And also, whilst you're at it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to hear about more new innovative tech that can help our health and our performance. So out the box with a device, all you have to do is download an app, sync it to the card device for the first time, which is very easy, it takes seconds, and then you're in a good place to start monitoring. Now, this is the iPhone app you can see here, and this takes you to the home screen. If you want to do a new recording, all you have to do is press that new recording button top left there and each time you do that, it'll trigger you to sync with the device very quickly, which it does really reliably. That's not the case with all Bluetooth devices that I've tested, particularly in this sphere, and that's nice and reliable. Nine times out of 10, I found it very easy to sync and you're off a minute to do the full test and you then get some great information back. The other tabs here, I want to drive into the information tab first because this is really important for what comes in the profile. The profile shows you all of your previous tests and results so you can see how your heart health is over time, not just for the single test. Settings lets you tweak things like height, weight, all of those kind of bits of data that are pretty standard on apps like this. But information is where it gets a little bit medical and really quite important. So if you dive into the medical info, you get an explanation of what the areas are that are being tested for here. So you've got an electrocardiogram, the ECG, and this shows you that there's a traffic light system here. Green is, you know, everything's normal. Yellow, as it says, recommends, suggests there's a small deviation in one of the parameters. And red is a significant deviation. And that is the trigger really to go and get a further detailed medical examination. Now that is also the case for... AR and AF, so arrhythmia and atrial fibrillation. And you could, again, you get a color-coded traffic light system here, which, you know, yellow, something to be aware of, but, you know, keep an eye. Um, there's a small deviation, but red, go and seek help, find out what's going on. And, you know, there's a really good explanation in here as to as to how and, and, and what is being detected. So it's very useful. The final one that you'll see on the next screen that I'm going to show you is this, which is ventricular repolarization heterogeneity. Well, if I've spent, said that right, that's you know, like, as I said, this is not. Um, this is a little bit deeper than I would normally go in terms of heart, heart health or fitness. But 
you get a nice explanation of what that is. And I guess really whether or not you need to understand that entirely is, is depends on whether you have one a condition that, that requires you to have that level of understanding, or you can just look very simply and see a color coded system, traffic lights, and you get some red indications and that means get some help, which I think is, is really good. You also get BPM and you get your, um, blood oxygen levels as well. The blood oxygen levels could be very interesting from a fitness perspective also. So let's go back and then let's dive in and see how those are represented in the profile. So you basically get a really nice easy screen that shows you your latest reading and how you were. So you can see I've got a little bit of deviation in my ECG report and I can click on that and I can see over the days that I've been monitoring here in the app that you can see that's happened a couple of times. Um, and you can see all of my other signs are normal. On this screen, you can also see your pulse. So what was the minimum? What was the maximum during the test and the average over the test that you've been doing? You can get your blood oxygen saturation as well. Um, and then there is some fitness information that goes in there. It counts steps and steps taken. I'm not, I'm not personally too sure why that's there. It feels a little bit arbitrary and it's not really pulling in data from any other sources, which I think means you have to carry the device with you, which I, and again, unless you've got a condition you're, you're having it with you to test regularly, I don't really see that as a benefit or something that you're going to do. And then body mass index, I mean, you, you find a million videos on YouTube talking about why body mass index is flawed um, and not really a great indicator of overall health and well-being so again i i don't really buy into that too much um i think that's kind of a bit surplus to requirements but on the whole i think this is really nice it gives you a, a really nice kind of um a nice view so you can dig deeper into a report for each test that you do and you get a little bit more information as to what's been happening with you a lot of the figures are repeated here but this will give you um, access to another screen which is more details and what this brings up is a, is a really detailed view of the ECG report and lots of information that I have to say is a little bit more medical than somebody of my knowledge could really understand and I think there's something that you would probably have to learn um, your doctors would certainly understand this but if you look over on the right hand side there you do get some useful information on what's a normal threshold and what is uh, your outcome score. So you can tell whether or not you're within a decent range. And I think that's highly useful. I've got an exclamation mark there for my QRS, um, which I'm not sure what that means, but I, you know, I'm, I'm learning this device and I think this is uh, interesting. You can also access your overall ECG curve as a more standard report that you might get a printout from a from a doctor from. This is this is exactly the kind of printout that you, you would be given before you went to run something like the Marathon de Saab by a doctor. Um, and they will be looking into this report to, to make sure that everything is normal and that you're fit to run. And that is pretty much that. So that's what you get. It's... Uh, it's a very, very detailed, I think very useful. It's always very simple to use. There's a lot of information in here that's, a, that's medical. It's a, probably a, a place that you have to dive into and, and, and improve your knowledge to really get the most out of. But I think as a device and as an app, it's actually very, very nice and simple to use when it could be very complicated, easy presented. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how, how I get on with it over, over the coming months.